everyone, thanks for joining back. YJ Yoga here, I'm Kimberly. Uh, earlier today, before I went for a run, I mentioned that we were gonna have, uh, do inversions. We're gonna have treat day on our yoga mats. So we're gonna start in child's resting pose, all right? So coming onto all fours here. And then you can have wide legs, or you can keep them shallow. I'm gonna keep mine shallow today. And I'm gonna push my hips right back as far as I can in towards the heels. I'm gonna take my hands back. You can put your arms forward or back, whatever makes you feel comfortable today. I like to hold up on the heels, get a little bit more traction. And all we're gonna do is roll the front of the forehead into the yoga mat. And just let the natural weight of your head be there for you. It'll do the work. Focus on the breathing. We're gonna warm up the arms because we're gonna get inverted. We're gonna get inverted pretty quick here, which is fun. We're gonna do a few different inversions today. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna coach you through them. You might be already on your way with inversions, which is awesome. And they might be new to you, which is also awesome. So consider it a nice treat to get back into them or just stay with them or learn something new all together. We're just gonna roll up, nice and easy here. Now while you sit for a moment, collect your breath, sit up nice and tall. I will simply put this in your mind. Inversions can be a, um, a face of fear. So getting flight where you can't see your legs, it's sort of a foreign feeling in our bodies because we don't walk around on our hands, do we? Sometimes we do. But um, not to fear. And you might get up today, you might already be 100% on that journey, and it might be something you've never done, so we're in it together, okay? So let's get ourselves on the yoga mat for downward facing dog. So lift your hips up, and start to get the weight into the hands and the feet, and just simply stretch out the legs, stretch out the arms. Lift up the heels and drop them over to the right side so you can get into the side waist and your upper lats, your upper shoulders, and towards the rib cage. Hang out there for a minute. Keep the arms super strong and steady, both of them. And then over to the opposite side. You're getting into the side wall. Such a great feeling. Couple breaths here. Take your time. Remember both arms nice and strong. And coming back to the center. We're gonna move back down onto the hands and the knees and we're gonna keep the hips kind of high here, like puppy pose. Right hand is out, left hand is gonna weave underneath the right armpit. I like to come up on the tips of my fingers here and you're just gonna relax in the hips. Now, if you are comfortable here, just stay here and get an opening through the shoulder. I'm gonna take my right leg back and kick stand it up on my toes just to get more weight coming down on my shoulder. Again, you don't have to do it, just go to the level that you feel good. Not one posture is more advanced than the other. This is just a part of the posture that I'm doing. So you take in whatever you want. Span through the hand. And then go ahead and push into the hand that's on the floor, the right hand, release, and switch sides. So right hand will come underneath the left. Again, you can tent the fingers if you like. Adjust yourself accordingly. And again, I'm gonna go ahead and kick out this left leg now. Kick stand it up on my toes, nice and strong through the legs. And this just applies a little bit more weight down on the shoulder. So if it serves you well, dive in. If you like the one prior, hang out there and have fun. Couple breaths here. And then go ahead and come up and out of that. From here, turn long side on your yoga mat and balance on your left knee as you take your right leg out to the side. Flatten the toes and sit back if it serves you well. If not, then just stay upright. See if you can flex out and get an opening through the inner right thigh. Flex the right foot and you'll protect that knee joint, okay? So breathing in and exhale. We're gonna take two more breaths, just like this here. So remember, don't dangle the head, keep it supported, and supporting up on those shoulders. 
from here, we're gonna go ahead and get one more side body stretch. So you're gonna come up on the knee if you're not there already. Reach over onto your left hand and extend through the right leg as you extend the right arm up and over the side body. Get a wicked side stretch here through the obliques and the lats again, similar to the feeling that you got in down dog. We're gonna roll the shoulder away from the side of the neck and ear. It's almost like you're brushing the wind with your hand. Again, you can look to where the wall and the ceiling meet in your view, or you can go ahead and raise the gaze. One more breath here. And exhale and come out of that. We're gonna switch it over. So right is gonna bend, you can stay high, or you can go low. Left leg kicks out, flex the foot, and dive into the inner groin on that left side. So you might feel kind of tight in here. I'm usually kind of tight in there, so I really like to kind of mimic the openings in my body, but change up the postures that I'm doing, but I still get the areas of need. Just breathing in here and enjoying the opening. Keeping the belly firm. And slowly making your way up here to reach over for the side body stretch. So taking that right hand out, you can tend to flatten it, whatever works for you. And extend the left arm up and over the side of the head and ear. And roll the shoulder away from the side of the neck and ear so you're not clustering into the neck. And then you can gaze up and out. You can gaze where the wall and the ceiling meet. Again, whatever serves you well comfortably. Two more breaths, just like this. Really feed the foot into the mat as you drag your hand away. It's like you're, pretend like you're pulling on a skipping rope. It's tucked under your foot, and then you're extending it, reaching out, but not shrugging that shoulder. So there's a fine line of give and take here. Inhale, and exhale, and come right up and out of that. And we're spin it around, and we're gonna come into our downward facing dog to make ourselves up to the front of the mat. And we're gonna make our way to the front of the mat here, stepping forward, and come right into your extension. Exhale, fold forwards. Use your belly muscles. Press through the feet, engage legs, inhale, and come on up. Arms rise. And then exhale, hands to the heart. So we're gonna take a few sun salutations and we're gonna add in some warriors between those poses to get the arms ready for inversions. And then when we are going through the sun salutations, you're gonna get ready to start jumping, start getting some flight if you want to take it, right? Okay. So that'll get us ready for inversions and what they're gonna feel like. All right. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, fold forwards. Inhale, come into your extension, lengthen. Practice jumping back without thumping in the pelvis, okay? So you'll exhale. Inhale, you get ready, and then you'll exhale. So inhale, press into the hands, lifting a little bit, leaning into the hands, and then you'll exhale. Slight balance back into your chaturanga, moving through your upward dog, inhale. Press into those hands, and then release back into your downward facing dog. And pause here. Take three nice breaths. Really groove into the feet and groove into the hands as best you can. Let the head go. Now on our third breath, we'll exhale. You'll soften the knees. And then when you go to take the next inhale to come forward, play with jumping, however you want to jump. It doesn't even matter if it's like two inches off the ground. Just when you land, don't be like, Ugh. Don't be super heavy in the pelvis because it's not going to serve your lower back well over time. So you want to start to get control of your landing. All right? So I'm going to go ahead and do it the way I do it, and you can play around with this. So I exhale, and I go forward on an inhale. Landing as soft as you possibly can. Inhale, extend. Exhale, fold. Press through the feet, inhale, come up. And exhale to release. Now we're going to move into warrior one with this. Inhale, arms come up. Exhale, fold forward. Make every position comfortable so you don't have to rush. Inhale, come to extension. And then exhale, work to flow back. Inhale, your upward dog. 
exhale your downward dog. We're going to pivot that left foot and lift up the right leg and place heel to toe down, okay? Start to walk your right hip back, hug your inner thighs together. Bring your arms forward, put your shoulders on your back. Head and neck come with you as you go all the way up. Press into both feet equally, especially that back, left, baby toe. Okay? Try not to clench your left glute and pull in through your belly muscles. And exhale, release the hands on either side of the foot. Swing the legs back. Take your vinyasa of choice, whether it be cobra or chaturanga. Exhale, come back down dog. Once you get here, pivot the right foot, lift the left leg, place it down, heel to toe. Angulate your left hip back. Arms forward, come up where you want. So remember now, pressing into that back baby toe and turning your torso so it's getting aligned here. And then exhale and release back. Pause and cycle through your vinyasa of choice at your time. And then exhale, come back. Taking downward facing dog. So from here, we're gonna come forward again, but this time you're gonna play with you're gonna play with jumping a little bit higher. So what you wanna do is control your legs and you wanna throw your bum towards your head, okay? So your your hips go forward. So you bend your knees and exhale and you do it on an inhale. So try that again. However high you get, doesn't matter. Bend. It's all with the breath and the strength of the arms. Okay, Keep your arms straight. Don't let them bend. And trust yourself. When you're done that, come forward right into your extension, and then exhale and fold forward. Inhale, all the way up, and exhale, and release. Okay. From here, you're gonna step the right leg out towards the back of the mat, pivot the left foot, and you're gonna come right into triangle pose. So you can use a block to the other side of the foot, or you can just put your hand on your shin, or you can reach your toe. Inhale, extend, pivot the hips back to the left, and then exhale your high jumping over, keeping the ribs nice and long, extending through the arms, feed the belly into the, into the navel. And then just slowly open up. Listen to what's going on through the pelvis too, right? You don't want to sit there and be dis in discomfort or feel any pain. So you just go to where you feel comfortable. Two more breaths. Soften the front knee, inhale, come up to warrior two, arms extend, you're gonna get a nice big one from that right leg, and gaze over your right middle finger, right off the edge there. Two breaths here. Soften through the shoulders. Now from here, you're gonna come into a side angle lunge. I like to really reach my arm up, and then you can go ahead and place the forearm above the knee and pause with your hand on your hip, or your arm can come all the way over and you can look up or out, okay? I'm gonna go ahead and reach down to the floor. And again, you can touch your fingers or use a block, but you wanna kiss the knee in towards the bicep, so don't let the knee fall in. Keep pushing it into the bicep, okay? Three more breaths right here. Hands and feet plug right in. And then inhale, go ahead, come all the way up. Extend the arms, pivot the feet, getting ready for triangle pose on the left side here. So reaching up and out, as far as you can go with comfort. Three breaths, right here. If you want to take longer breath holds, be my guest. We're gonna soften that left knee. Inhale, come up. Take a nice warrior two. Really extend through the left knee. And gaze over the left middle finger. Look at either side of your arm. Make sure one's not way down here, way up here. Sometimes that happens. And if your biceps get a little sore, just flip your palms up like you're holding little marbles. It's always a good point of reference. 
Then you're gonna go ahead and reach either the forearm above the knee, take the hand to the waist, or up and over, okay? Or you can go ahead and reach a little further, block, tented fingers, or a flat hand, whatever is going to work for you here today. Arm up and over. Three more breaths, right here. We're gonna kiss the knee right into the left bicep here. Don't let it collapse in. And kind of like lean open. Spiral your ribs and your heart up. And keep your waistline neutral. Plug you into both feet, especially this back leg. Inhale, you come all the way up. Turn both toes to the long side of your yoga mat. And we're going to come right into Prasadita C. So wide leg stance with the arms bound behind you. So again, this can be challenging. So we'll roll the shoulders up and back. And let the, let the scapula sit right on the back. So don't muscle it. So the arms be kind of limp. Club the hands together. And then start to reach forward. Press into your feet. Engage your core. And if you do not want to take your arms off your back, you don't have to. Okay? If you're not able to clasp like I'm demonstrating here, then pull, pull into the elbows. But first see if you can do it. Okay? If you can go further, start to bend the elbows, roll the shoulders, let the gravity take the shoulders so you're not over mus over muscling, and then start to extend. Once you get to an extension, you'll feel this big rotation feels delicious. Sometimes you get a little neck release. So go with that. Two more breaths here. It's nice to practice getting inversions with the feet still on the floor. Just getting to understand the feeling of the blood going towards the head. <laughs> that's what's going to happen. One more breath here. And you're going to let the hands come back. Inhale, and slowly come up. You don't have to rush this. It's very classic to feel lightheaded in that posture, in that series of poses. Now you're going to turn forward. And you pause right at the front of your yoga mat. And from downward dog, we're going to move right forward to the front of the mat. And when we do that, because we're going to practice inversions, we're going to jump there or get some flight. So what happens is you exhale. And then on your inhale, you start to make flight. It doesn't matter how high off the ground you go, just don't thump back down. Focus on having some control, because in the long run, it's not gonna be happiness on your lower back, okay? So bend your knees, exhale. Get ready to come forward. So on your inhale. Nice and light. Inhale, extend. Exhale, and fold forward. Inhale, you want to come all the way up, arms rise. And exhale, right into standing, equal standing. Okay, so we're going to move through sun salutations now and move into warrior one. And we're going to add the, the floating and the jumping to get that rolling in our bodies. Okay, so inhale, arms come up. Exhale, and fold forward. Inhale, come to your extension and prepare to float or step back. Okay. You're gonna lean into the hands and you inhale, and then through the inhale, you begin to transition and exhale the power of the belly. Okay, so inhale. So right there, you're in a full exhale. Come right into your upward dog and then reach the hips up and back into your down facing dog. From here we're going to move into warrior one. So let's lift the heels, pivot the left foot, and then lift the right foot, place the heel to toe down on the yoga mat. Start to hug your right hip towards the back of the mat, back corner there. Then we're going to inhale, come to warrior one. Bring the arms all the way up. Press the hip flexors forward without straining the back. Look up and out or forward, whatever works for you. You can separate the arms if you like on your hips. Nice big lunge. One more breath here. Inhale. Exhale. Transition down to your chaturanga. Pause. And then lower through. Hover a foot from your floor. 
Inhale, come to your upward dog, nice strong arms, strong legs, and then reverse back to your downward facing dog. And just take it easy. Right foot's gonna pivot in, and the left foot, heel to toe forward between the hands here. Left hip's gonna start to move back, you're gonna really anchor it back. Arms come forward, press into the back foot. Inhale, arms up. Warrior one, press hips forward, firm up the belly. Relax your shoulders, soften your jaw. Two breaths here. Doesn't matter how deep you lunge, as long as you feel comfortable and you can maintain the proportion of the lower back and the core. And then exhale. Transition down through your plank. Anchor your tailbone, shoulder blades on the back, hover and lower. Upward facing dog, strong arms. Exhale back. Downward facing dog. Pause here for two breaths. Now we're gonna play with jumping and hovering. So when you jump and hover, you wanna throw your hips up towards your head. And there is that little fear factor that sets in, and that's okay. So say for instance you're gonna jump. Don't do that. Really focus not to land super hard. So with control, okay? So I jump on an inhale. That's how I do it. So I bend the knees, exhale. And I throw my hips towards my head. Get ready to have fun. Inhale. You practice hovering. When you inhale, you build that breath up into your chest and your core will balance. So now you can make your way forward or you can play around. Come into your extension and then exhale and fold forward from here. Inhale, come all the way up, arms rise. And exhale, hands to the side. And we're going to move it to open up the hips. We're going to go into side angle. So you want to take your right leg right up towards the other side of the mat and pivot your feet around. Okay? And then inhale and extend the arms. Reach your hips back and high jump up and over the thighs. So you can have a block there on the other side of the foot. You can reach for your shin. You can go a little lower. You just want to listen to what's going on in your lower back. Okay? And then arms come up. Take a couple good breaths here. You're going to soften the right knee, look down. Inhale, come all the way up. You're going to lunge into the right leg into warrior two. Okay? Make sure that the bottom arm or the back arm is low or high. Just, just take a little gaze around your body. Look out off your middle finger. Two more breaths here. Take your left leg towards the front of the mat. Here we're 
come into triangle pose, Trikonasana, inhale, extend the arms, and then high jump up and over your left thigh. Remember, you can put a, whatever you did on the other side, you can mimic here. And you just want to listen in. I just got a little click in my hip there, so I pause and listen in. It's good. Three breaths right here. Remember, don't lean into the leg. You want to press, press into the feet like you could just hover here. And we're going to soften this left knee, okay? Look down, and then inhale and come all the way up. And we're going to go right into our warrior two from here. So lunging nice and deep to that left leg, and extend the arms firmly. Nice and strong through the kumba here, through the belly. Looking back, just dissecting where your body's at. The more you move around in different angles and get to know the body, the more free inversions we'll start to feel. It's pretty fun. And practice, of course. Then we're going to inhale, then exhale, release the arms, and pivot on the ball of that back foot. A nice long lunge here. Getting into the hip, pause. Okay. Then we're going to reach down, and you want to bring this left leg, drag it back a little bit, and then pivot the right foot out to the side and make sure that you've shortened your stance. You're not super wide and you're not on a tight rope. So that means that foot is not directly behind the front foot. Out to the side, hip distance. You want to walk your left hip back. You're going to feel that hamstring and you're measuring out the pelvis here. Seeing the neutral lines here. You can feel it. And then folding forward. Part of the sin right over the front leg. Just go as far as you can. If you need to be up on the shin, that's fine too. If you need block, it's great. Just don't collapse in the knee joint. You want to always keep a little bit of buoyancy, some freedom in the joints. One more breath here. Exhale. Now you're going to go ahead and reach on to that ankle. Tend the right fingers out to the side. And starting to understand, inhale for some flight, without muscling through the body. So I'm not like squeezing my bum and flexing my leg and pointing my toe. I'm being really, really relaxed with this leg. And I'm letting the weight of me, like a teeter-totter, the tip, I'm letting my tipping help elevate my leg. So I'm not putting any aggression into my body. I'm just exposing what's available. And then you're going to release right here into a forward fold. Right leg comes beside the left. And you want to come right into an extension and pause. That's a big opening in those legs. And exhale from here. You're going to pull forward. And then inhale, you're going to come all the way up. Arms rise. Exhale, release. Okay, let's get into it. We're gonna get right into handstands, all right? So I'm gonna give you some tips, and we're gonna use the wall. But first, we're gonna go onto all fours and just get the function of the arms. I'm not gonna take a long time, not gonna bore you. It's gonna be fun, this is a treat, okay? So coming onto all fours here to get the understanding of, of your body, okay? Of how much, you, how much weight is gonna be on your arms. So you wanna spread the fingers super wide, all right? Then what you want to do is, just like when we do chaturanga, okay? When we lean forward, we put the shoulder blades on the back without flailing the arms. Arms stay strong. These are now becoming legs when you do a handstand, okay? So same, same things apply, same tools. So you want to melt the heart, put your shoulder blades on the back. And you can see my upper back is engaging. When you do handstands, you use the whole upper pelvis. You don't just use the arms, you're using the front, the side, and the back of the upper body. Arms are there as legs. So just practice from here with me, coming up into like a perch. So I'm gonna lift the hips up, okay? And walk the feet in as high as you can on your tippy toes. And get as close to your hands as you can. And then what I want you to practice is lean forward so that your lower belly starts to fire up. Then what happens is your hands start to become a pair of feet. So then you want to put your shoulder blades on your back so you can see in my body here how I want to push away. This is going to make me be really wobbly. I'm not going to get up into my handstand securely. So what I want to do is take this congestion out of my neck and get 
get the contraction of my upper chest working. So lean forward and practice that. Melt the heart, melt the heart. And you want to look slightly out. You don't want to look down and be top heavy, okay? So you practice this sort of action. Lean forward, lean forward, lean forward, just to get the understanding of how much weight is gonna be on the upper body, okay? Now we're gonna practice kicking up, okay? But we're gonna go to the wall. So let's go to the wall. Okay, so you can practice at, at a wall if you're more comfortable with that. But I'm gonna show you some techniques how to, how to get up, okay? So when you're coming into your handstand, what I just showed you before with the arms, this all applies, okay? So if you have a wall in front of you, you can start to kick up the wall. But what you want to do is get your kicking leg ready. So you do this on an inhalation. So you get your kicking leg ready and your kicking leg stays strong. It's not seaweed in the ocean. All right, you inhale. And your other leg kicks up. Okay, I call this the water pump. <laughs> then you practice and you kick up. You kick up. Then maybe both legs go up. Maybe you tip out. Okay? Remember, you want to keep looking slightly out. So go for it. Play around. I'll play too. Eventually, you just find yourself balancing on your hands. Alright? And then you just come down. Come right onto, the, onto your knees. And that's fun. <laughs> and we're gonna go into plow pose from here, right? So we're gonna lie on the back. I recommend using a blanket, okay, to help the neckline. So I'm gonna go ahead and grab my blanket. Okay. You just wanna fold your blanket up. Some of you are probably pretty accustomed to this. And you wanna have your tops of your shoulders here and your head on your yoga mat, right? Now you just go ahead and you get as far as you can. I'm going to show you a quick technique with this. Is you can have a block to catch your feet as high as, as high as you need it. And that can help you with catching your feet so you don't have to go all the way over and feel like you're super heavy or out of control. So tops of the shoulders at the top of the blanket. You can fold it up nice and easy. Head is off. And then what you do is you want to start to get some momentum, okay? I like to hold the side of my yoga mat and then inhale and kick up. So right here I was talking about the block. You can measure your body and then you can put a block there to balance if it feels awkward. Otherwise, pinch the side of your yoga mat still and roll your shoulders underneath. And you want to get a nice pucker in the neckline. So if you can see my neck, it's not, none of the vertebrae are touching touching the floor. I don't want to have compression, okay? So if you can interlace your hands, go for it. A nice little tip here is to keep a bend in the elbows, okay? Otherwise, you go all the way over. And halasana, you can hover your legs. You can, you can bend your knees and be here. Okay, otherwise, go over. And take a good five breaths here. Don't look down towards your chin. Keep your head neutral, okay? Just like you would when you're standing. Okay, so you're gazing at your legs. A couple good breaths here. This is still part of part of inverting. Legs over the heart, legs up, arms down. Breathe here. Keep your head nice and stable. And then we're gonna go right into Sarvangasana, right into shoulder stand, which is highly beneficial. It stimulates the thyroid gland, reduces stress. Again, it's an inversion, it's a beautiful inversion. So you go on in there. I like to put my hands on my skin because it's helpful. And you can take both legs up at the same time or one leg up at a time. What we want to do is try not to point your toes here. Flex your feet and you can zip your legs up nice and tight. Try not to squeeze your butt and press your hips forward. Now the goal here is, again, look at my neck. It's off of the mat. It's not a super easy pose either. It takes a little bit of time. So if you're back here with your bum, which is sometimes pretty common in this pose, that's okay. What you want to work on is if you have the height in the shoulders and you have flexibility, work on pressing your hips forward and mimicking that you're standing on the ceiling. Okay, you're dancing. Okay. Be here. A couple more breaths, really engaging the belly. Okay. 
from here, you can you can move the legs around, you can play around. Alright? And then when you come down, you come down with control. So I like to bend the knees. And then again, pinch the side of your yoga mat. Okay, and then roll down one vertebrae at a time. Okay, undo the shoulders. If the head comes off, that's fine. It's actually better if it does, just to help organize the core. You come all the way down. Release back. Okay. Just rest there for a moment. And then we're going to go into a couple nice neck stretches and then go right into relaxation. Okay. So before we go there, you can just move your body down if you have your blanket. Put your head right on the blanket now. Okay. Move it up off the shoulders. Draw the knees in towards the chest. Open up the back. Sometimes when you do inversions, the mind can get really excited. So you want to stay really calm. Focus on all the tools, all the techniques that you're starting to accumulate in your yoga practice with all the postures. Okay? Draw your knees over to the right. Expand your arms. Loosening up the back. Keep the gaze looking up at the ceiling. One big breath here. And then just alternating over to the other side. Keep your head neutral. And relax into the shoulders. Big breath in here. And then come all the way up with the legs all the way over to that side again. Bring your arm with you and slowly come up into a seated posture. When we come into our seated posture, sit, sit as comfortable as you like. And we're gonna do a couple little neck stretches. So you can perch yourself up on something if you want for your hips. So when we come to into our neck stretches, <clears throat> Because we did a, uh, a lot of stuff with our arms, you can get pretty, you can get pretty tied up and, and towards the traps and whatnot. So, and especially if you're not really used to being on your arms a lot, so we're just gonna release that. Regardless, it's good for you. Okay. So treat yourself to a little bit of neck release. So I'm gonna take the hands behind the head, soften the jaw the whole time. Okay. You get a little traction in the back of the neckline. So you're just gonna drop in, elbows come in. Keep your spine nice and tall. And when you get into this pose, you might be like, oh my gosh. It's just you're releasing all of the muscles down, the, down your back on either side of your spine. All you gotta do is let the weight of the arms hug the back of the head, elbows in. You just let the head hang forward with a tall spine. And the work, the work is just getting done. Pretty rewarding. So keep that mouth soft. I take five more juicy breaths. If you need more breaths or you just want more breaths, go ahead. And if you are practicing a lot of inversions, headstands, handstands, forearm balances, it's really good to take into consideration after you do that to do neck stretches. So I'll give you a couple of here that I really like to do after inversions. And you want to, all you want to do here is release your hands, okay? And then let your head slowly come up. It might feel a little bit weird. Then you're going to turn to the left and to the right, okay? So all the way to the left, as far as you can. Good range of motion is positive. And you want to treat yourself to getting good range of motion. Now we're just gonna go right into the side of the neck. So we're gonna take the right hand over by the left ear, soft jaw, tall spine, and let the weight of the arm draw the weight of the head down. Okay, it'll just do the work itself. Now with this left hand, flip it open and let it relax on the floor so it doesn't feel like it has to contract. This is really, this is a yummy one. Now from here, just to double it up. We're gonna go in behind the side of the neck a little bit. So all you wanna do here is take your hand to 
the back of the head, okay? Turn your chin towards your collarbone and draw down. Maintaining the height, maintaining the release in the jaw. Three reps here, or as many as you like. We're just gonna mimic the same side. So if you wanna stay longer, be my guest. Treat yourself to release. yumminess of the skin, unwinding, loosening up those tight cobwebs of the muscles, of the tendons, the skin all tight, layers and layers and layers, working to release. When you come out of these poses, you always want to treat your head and your neck with the utmost compassion. Just release the hand, lift up, turn left, and right. So the feeling is kind of elastic. It feels like an elastic band stretching, especially when you do one side and have it on the other. It feels like, what is going on? So reaching over left hand, over by the right ear. And again, soft jaw, tall spine. Flip this right palm up and let it relax into nothing. Weight of the arm draws the weight of the head down. Close your eyes. Relax. Never know what kind of day we're having. Whatever is going on. So taking this time in your yoga practice, really treat yourself to something new, something exciting, something of a release. Maybe, maybe it's a challenge that you worked on today. Maybe you're like, Kimberly, this is so easy. It's good. Good then. And then all you want to do is release the hand and take it towards the back of the head. Turn your chin towards your collarbone. And draw down. Ooh -wee. I'm feeling that one. <laughs> oh, I guess I'm in need of this one. Wow. I'm going to call this, this is a special feeling. Good breaths there. Oh man, I'd stay here for 10 minutes. <laughs> but I want to bring you to Shavasana. So deep breathing. One thing I have to remind myself in practice is when I get into an area, I, I sometimes I shallow my breath because I'm so focused on the way that it feels. Don't do that, keep breathing. The breath is gonna get the work done for you. It's gonna help oxygenate the flow. Release the hand and inhale, bring the head up. Turn all the way to the right. All the way to the left. Oh, might get a little crack like I did. Alright, feeling good. I'll treat it up here. Alright, we're going to go into Shavasana. It's our favorite part, right? So treat yourself ready to shut off the now. Relaxation. Again, do anything you want. I'm gonna go ahead and put this on my knees, under my knees. I'm gonna go ahead and keep my feet warm, my legs. Right. And I'm gonna go ahead and put this for my head. You can do what you like. All the way down. So I'm signing off. Thanks for joining. I hope you learned something. And uh, comment. Tell me what you want to see. And um, I'll bring it out because I love doing yoga with you. See you later. Shabbat. Okay, so you can bring your yoga mat to a wall nearby. I'm going to demo handstand on the wall just so that you feel comfortable. And so you don't see me fall a bunch of times. <laughs> <laughs> so this is how you get started. I mean, the preference of bringing your hands super close is helpful, but sometimes, you know, sometimes it's not. So I just like to throw my hands down about, you know, a foot and a half from, from the wall. And I get my kicking leg ready, okay? So my kicker. My left leg's my kicker. So what happens is I lean into the hands and give yourself some momentum. Start to, start to kick your left leg, keep it straight. And then eventually, 
you just get right up there, okay? Now don't banana your back and lean away again. Okay. 